is John Zapia streaking away. He gets the win at the opening round of the season. We'll stand again for Lyle, but big problems for Sam Fennick. Lyle, 583, 404. Big wheel stand at half track for the Camaro of Ham, and it'll be a 573. One parachute out, man, he is going fast, Paul Mahayat. for the Santos Summer Thunder and the weather's living up to its name. It's been very hot here. As hot as the action's going to be because today we're looking at Pro Slammer. 3,000 plus horsepower all wrapped into sedan bodies and we have been experiencing one of the most competitive seasons in this category that we've had for a long, long time. Mark, just how tough has it been? Well, in my opinion, this season of Pro Slammer is probably one of the most diverse we've ever seen for the bracket. We've had three events, three different winners, three different championship leaders heading into this event. Zapier won the first one at Nitro up north. Then Kelvin Live got his first ever event victory in Pro Slam at the East Coast Thunder event. He took the championship lead. Paul Mahate, defending champion, got his first taste of victory at the last round of the New Year Thunder. He comes into this event as the championship leader, but snapping at the heels, Sam Fennick has been going very, very strong so far. Well, one of the surprises in pre-event testing coming into the Santos Summer Thunder is this man, Sam Fennick. Currently low ET of testing, 566, mate. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Rusty. <laughs> it's, it's been coming. Uh, we've been working on this car, as you know, for probably three months now. And uh, we fought us in Willowbank, but we're down here. And we had a bit of testing on Tuesday. The heat, very difficult. Track stood up to it. We're doing very well. Uh, the Lloyds Classic Car Auctions Camaro is flying, mate, and uh, we can't wait for round one. Top four in the points at the moment, and you've got a good chance to move forward with the way this car's performing this weekend. Yeah, look, we, yeah, anytime we can move forward, one spot would be great. Couple, two, three would be awesome. You know, we can leave here number two or three would be over the moon. Yeah, we know testing's one thing. The shakedown is, I guess, no pressure. But when you get to the first round of racing, it all changes. How are you approaching that first round of racing? Same as any other run, mate. Doesn't matter who's in the other lane. We'll hold it flat and uh, run it all the way to the finish line. Let's have a look at those championship points. Through consistency and his win at the last round, Paul Mahat is on top on 257. John Zapier 218. Kelvin Lyle 217, but we won't see him here this weekend. Crashed his car at Willowbank. Sam Fennick, there he is on 214. Emilio Spinozzi, man, he is up there punching above his weight. Hasn't been able to win an event, but guess what? He is still there in the points. We move here into round one of Pro Slammer. It's going to be father versus son. How about this for a first round matchup? Victor Bray to take on Benny Bray. The two Gulf Western Oil teammates going head to head. Great to see Victor back in action in the 57 Chevy. And you have to say that uh, Ben Bray has been uh, threatening in this Corvette for a while. He's a guy that can step up and win an event before too long. Well, that's it. They're, they're starting to get on top of their setup. And I was chatting to Benny before this round of racing, and he was actually talking about Victor's chances. Like, incrementals-wise, that car of Victor's has been just as quick as Benny's, but it's just about getting it to the finish line. So I'd give Victor a real shot here. Yeah, they're running all the latest gear that they had uh, bolted into the Frankie Taylor Corvette last season. And Victor, he's getting more and more comfortable in the car every single pass. As you say, he's been extremely quick through to a halfback and a thousand foot. 
and Ben knows that uh, Dan's the one that could whip his bum here. <laughs> well, that's it. We know all that gear in Victor's car went 570 with Frank Taylor. So it's just about applying all that horsepower through the chassis of the 57 Chevy here. And I'll tell you what, they could have a real quick race car. The other thing in Victor's hand at the moment is he's been cutting some absolutely killer reaction times. He has been as sharp as ever in this car. And Benny, you know, you don't want to be slow on the tree because the old Victor of the other lane there, he could put one on him. Well, it's been extremely hot here at Sydney Dragway. Testing yesterday was 40 plus degrees. Fortunately, today is a bit cooler. The crowd, though, is still hanging under the shade that's available, that is for sure. Pro Slammer getting underway with round one. It's the three round all run system. So we'll see all of these drivers out for three runs. The top two point scorers go to the final. Ben is in with a handful here. Victor's in front of him until almost the finish line. Oh, Victor had the whole shot. Victor had the lead at half track, and I thought he was going to run away with it. I thought he had it, but Benny Bray goes 5.78. That is a great pass for the team for the win. Victor goes 5.91 in the lane beside him. Looked like he might have rolled off the throttle a little bit early there across the finish line, but Benny Bray gets a win here, gets the 20 points. The crew are happy with that 5.78. Well, they're just delighted to see Victor competitive again in the Gulf Western Oil 57 Chevy. Hiked the front wheels, carried him a long way out, and definitely in front of half track mark. He was, and you could just see the butterflies close there just before the end of the finish line. So he was off a bit early. That was a 580 pass for Victor if he stays on it. And it, what could have been? Well, let's ride along with uh, Victor Bray here. And I'm sure that the entire Bray team won't be too disappointed. Absolutely, guys. Down here with Brett from Benny Bray's crew. It's always fun when you get to whip up on the old man, mate. Yeah, it is good. Um, I mean, he's still the legend in the sport. There's no one else. Um, we've been struggling a little bit with a miss today, so that's 78 promising. So let's just see what we can come with the next round. Great news. Go back and get it ready, mate. Thanks, guys. There's Stephen Ham at work in the office moving forward with the uh, Fuso Camaro. He's going to be taking on Emilio Spinozzi, but uh, Matt Kavanagh, he's got a very happy Ben Bray in the braking area. Yeah, we're here with Benny Bray, 578. How does that feel, mate, to get that 70 here at Sydney? Nah, it's good. Uh, the, the Gulf Western Oils Corvette, it's back to where it should be. Uh, I've been letting them down over the last couple of races. Been chasing a gremlin in the electronics. Hopefully I found it. Uh, the 88, it was still on six cylinders for half the pass, so I knew as soon as it got a clean pass, it's a low 70 car, so hopefully that puts me in the range where I need to be so I can catch ham. Good luck in round two. Thank you. Everybody's talking about Stephen Ham. He's, he's been very quick with that Camaro. Yeah, he, he went one of the quickest passes we've seen in testing in that 570 zone. And it has cooled off from that test pass earlier today. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Stephen Ham drop into the 560s here. And that's what Emilio spinozzi has got to be thinking about. This team is still looking for that first five-second pass out of this Speedmaster Chevelle. And you know what? 560s from Ham, that, that's, that's a big leap for these guys. So let's see what they've got. And of course, what we've seen is Spinozzi. He's picked up a lot of round wins by virtue of just getting from A to B, not particularly fast, but the guy in the other lane has had problems time and time again. And that he's is... got to hope that the Fuso Brisbane Camaro does just that. Yeah, that's it. That's their strong point for this team. They have been getting to the finish line under power and taking those chances when they've come across them. Stephen Ham all the way. A couple of wheel stands are in the process. 570, 409 kilometres an hour. Beat Spinozzi 612. We're on board with Stephen Ham. You can see his finger on the uh, trans brake there. Let's go on the button. He's got an auto in this car, so he doesn't need to shift up on the parachute lever. Brings his car to a slow from 409 kilometres per hour. That was 5.70 seconds with Stephen Ham. Didn't quite sneak into his 560s that he wanted, but he's got 20 win points and a very quick ET, the quickest so far. So I think uh, crew chief Stuart Rowlan should be reasonably comfortable with that performance. Yeah, the best way I can describe Steve Ham at the moment is has car, can drive. Stuart Rowland, he is on a tear at the moment. 5700, got to be happy with that. Yeah, basically that was just the last one repeated. So uh, put a bit of weight in the front, try and calm it down, bit more for the next one. Still came up though. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the lockup kicking in. It's kicking in early and trying to get after it, but can't sort it there yet. Two, two more runs tonight, mate. So good luck for the rest of the evening. Thank you. They come out as thick and fast in Pro Slammer. There is the Lloyd's Classic Car Auction car of uh, Sam Fennick burning out. 
but Matt Kavanagh's got Steve Ham. Yeah, I'm here with a delighted Stephen Ham, 570 in a round one win. Oh, that's what we needed. We just needed really to repeat what we had earlier and not overstep the mark like we did last time here in Sydney against the same car. So um, tried to keep it conservative and tame the wheel stand down a little bit and just go A to B and hopefully the weather comes in later and you know, pop into the 60s. Well, good luck in round two. Thank you. That's ominous for the field when he says a 5700 is conservative. That's it. On track though, Sam Fennick and Tessing went 5.66 seconds. He's half a tenth ahead of the field at the moment. On that test pass, and it has cooled down here, so Mark Hinchwood for Fabietti Racing. These guys have got a tough race here. Yeah, the AC Delco uh, Monaro is certainly a quick car, but 66 in the lane beside him, that is going to be a reasonably steep hill to climb. You see Fennec rolling forward. Hinchelwood now joining him there on the start line. We're on board with Sam Fennec. You can see his finger there over on the steering wheel. Got the button there, the trans brake. Look at the concentration on his face. He is staring at that Christmas tree. You, you can't lose a thousand there. Very close at half track. Hinchelwood, smoke out of the car. I thought he had that. What? And it's... Something's gone away in the engine, and Fennec has driven around him. He's got a bracket car. Sam Fennec goes 566 again. That's the low ET of the round so far. Takes maximum points from this race, but Mark Hinchelwood, he was right beside him. He had 400s on the tree. He was only 400 slow at a half track, and then something went away in the engine there, and that's the death sign, that smoke coming out the side. Oh, I don't like that sign at all. Man, he had that shot to bits, but in the end, a win's a win, and Sam Fennick has been doing just that, Rusty. Another 560 there for Sam Fennick. I'm out here with Mark Savage, crew chief. Now, we've got an opportunity here because we're just checking the racetrack in Mark Hinchelwood's lane. You just walked out and had a look at the tyre tracks out here. Exactly what are you looking for when you're examining what the car did? Uh, just to see what the tyre did, if it shook a little bit out there or quivered a little bit out there, and uh, just thinking of what we're going to run for next round. Looked like it was fairly smooth out there, 566 with a six. Got to be happy with that. This car has really turned around in the last 24 hours. Oh yeah, no, I'm thrilled. You know, all these guys have been working so hard on this car and we've struggled for a little bit with issues and uh, it's starting to pay off. I, I feel good about it. Keep your eye on the Lloyds Classic Car Auctions team because they are moving up the points this weekend, guaranteed. Now we're going to try our best. Thanks, guys. You're just going fantastic at the moment, aren't you? 566 this afternoon, you back it up right now with another 566. Yeah, this Louis Clatcher car, Alchus Camaro's flying, bro. I lost my breath, actually. Um, Mark Savage is killing it today. Um, awesome on the tune-up. Uh, the boys are working really hard. Uh, yeah, we're a great team. We work really hard, and uh, we're doing it for the sponsors today. Well, hopefully we'll see you back in the winner's circle in round two. That'd be awesome, mate. Thank you very much. Back to you, Rob. Here comes the man, John Zappia for Fox in the... Monero from Western Australia and he's going to be taking on Michelle Davies in the Mustang and Michelle has certainly now stepped up the performances in this uh, pro uh, logistics car. Yeah, well she is now the uh, quickest female driver in Australia for a pro slam running into that five second zone but she is taking on John Zappia. Zappia second in the championship here so he doesn't want to let Mahayat streak away at all so he's got to get wins where he can. The last round at Willowbank Raceway, the New Year Thunder, this thing was anything but smooth. It was a wild car. It was wheel standing. It was shaking. It crossed the center line. This thing was just an absolute animal. Let's see how he goes here in round one against Michelle Davies. Well, there's no question Zapier's got more horsepower than Michelle, but that doesn't always do it for you. It's got to be the whole balance. That is the, the trick. And of course, in this uh, 400 Thunder all run three round system, it is very important to get quick times, not only wins, because in each of the first two rounds of racing, there are bonus points for the best ETs. Eight for the quickest, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one for the eighth fastest time. And after two rounds of racing, the two drivers with the most points go through to the championship final, and they race for the trophy. Well, low ET at the moment, still fending with that 566. Oh, big hole shot for Davies. It's all Zapier though. 579, 403 kilometers per hour. Wasn't a perfect pass for the team, but they're into the 570 zone. They get the win, pick up 20 points and possibly some bonus points as well. Well, Michelle Davies, as you said, had a lovely hole shot here, but 
got loose. She's had to get on and off the throttle. That let Zapier past and it was uh, put out the glasses. It was all one-way traffic. And the uh, the man of Pro Slammer just picks up another round win. Yeah, well, Davies actually extended her lead to that 60 foot. She was actually 300s quicker than Zapier to 60 foot, but then Zapier came home very strong. Have a look at this, riding along with John Zapier. That was the lead that uh, Davies had, but it will be a Zap win. Yeah, 579 down here with Richard Zapier. Mate, it's a, maybe a little bit on the conservative side when you see what we saw from Steve Ham with that 70 flat. Yeah, we um, toned it down a bit from uh, the previous run with a big wheel stand and we thought we um, just want to do enough, get through, and then we can readjust for the next one. There is no easy rounds in Slammer these days, is there? Every single car can come out here and win races. Yeah, that's right. There's uh, four to probably six cars that all can win a meeting and uh, it's got really tight. <laughs> I love the smile on your face when you say that, mate. Uh, good job, and we'll see you in the second round. Yeah, John's very satisfied, and you continue your fight in the championship. Another round win. Yeah, no, that's good. The Fuchs, Danani Monaro, um, ran OK, but it left well, but it had a bit of a misfire through the gears. And I was going, just hang on there and make it to the end. So that's why the performance wasn't there. Other than that, it was a flawless, flawless run. So... Hopefully we can fix it for the next one and get back to where it needs to be in the 60s. Look forward to seeing you in round two. Thank you. Well, there's Jeff Gratton in the Sigma rolling stock uh, Chrysler, and he is up against Paul Mahaya, the defending champion for Moitz in the uh, Mack Mustang. And you've got to say for John Zappi, it's a bit of a worry. He's already got two guys quicker than him in this round, so at best he can take six bonus points, and Paul Mahaya's still to come. Well, that's it. Paul Mahayat, if he can run quicker than that 579, get the win here, gets more points on John Zapier in that championship. And that, that's the end goal for these guys here, defending that 400 Thunder Pro Slammer Championship. You cannot take Jeff Braddon lightly at all. This, these guys run to the 580 zone, knocking on the door of 570s. So, you, you know, you, you've got to be strong on this run. You can't be conservative at all with Paul Mahayat. Well, you can't because uh, not only do you need the win against Braddon, but realistically, you want to be in the top two in each round if, you, if, if you've got your eyes focused on that championship final later on this evening. So he has to run quicker than at least uh, Ham's 5700 to be getting in that top two from this round of racing. Well, Grant with a whole shot. Yeah, but he's actually gone red on the tree, handing the win to Paul Mahayat. Mahayat goes 573, so that's the third quickest pass of this session. 410 kilometers per hour. Grattan goes 584 in the lane beside him, but it was all Mahayat. Indeed, it is down here with uh, Skip from the Moines crew, mate. Uh, didn't pick up all the bonus points that time around, but you grabbed some and you grabbed more than Zap. Yeah, we did, mate. Listen, we, we've changed a lot of parts in the car in the last week. We've got a new rear end housing in the car, so we're trying to you know, realign the car. We did a lot of testing again on top of it, but the temperature got better of us and we had a few hot days, so we're not really where we needed to be. Uh, the car's obviously still a bit loose, but the wins a win, we're through to the next round. So. Go get your driver, mate. Thanks, mate. Yeah, we got Paul Moy here, round one win, third fastest in our uh, points there for the low ET. Yeah, we uh, struggled a little bit in testing, but you know, I backed the car down a little bit to make sure we went down against Jeff, and uh, I certainly had to drive it. We got to the other end, I went 73, so happy days, next, on to round two. Yeah, good luck. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank my sponsors, Moitz, Mac, Komatsu, uh, BAC Systems, uh, everybody that makes this happen. I appreciate it. High-tech oils too. Got them all in there. And have a look at the points from round one. Sam Fennick, he grabs the most, 28. Stephen Ham, 27. Paul Mahat, 26. Ben Bray, 25. John Zapier's right back in uh, fifth with 24 points. Now, Mahat would have been concentrating on Zapier, but all of a sudden, he's got Fennick and Ham to keep an eye on because the defending champ, he's got work to do if he's going to make the final. Well, it's all wide open here at the Santo Summer Thunder for Pro Slammer. Come back after the break and we'll see who can make that final. In the USA, they call them Pro Mods. Here in Australian 400 Thunder Drag Racing, they're Pro Slammers. The rules and names may change from country to country a little, but what we're talking about are the fastest accelerating sedans in the world. John Zapier holds the Australian record at 5.60 seconds set here at Sydney Dragway, while the reigning champion Paul Mahayat claimed the speed record at an amazing 419 kilometres an hour in a run at Perth Motorplex in March of last year. 
That's a huge speed to reach from a standing start in just 400 metres. So what would it take for you to have one of these wild machines that almost defy physics? You start with a very strong chromoly steel chassis and integral roll cage that may cost anywhere up to $40,000. That's then wrapped in a lightweight carbon fibre or fibreglass replica of the sedan body of your choice. The classic muscle car shapes like Ford Mustangs, 1950 Chevys and swoopy Corvettes are definitely the most popular choices. That's another $20,000 or so. Suspension components including high-tech shock absorbers and a supply of super lightweight wheels and tyres just added about another $50,000 or more to your bill. Big power comes from a big engine, a very specialised V8 motor of anything up to 9 litres. The engine block and heads are machined out of solid lumps of high-grade aluminium. The motor is topped with a big supercharger and fuel injection to force air and methyl alcohol fuel into the cylinders where over 3,000 horsepower is produced. Top to bottom, you won't get any change out of $130,000. And you better have two engines. You'll need a spare when the first one breaks. Behind the motor is where it starts to get tricky. Not so long ago, everyone ran a similar transmission setup with a clutch and three-speed planetary gearbox like John Zapier used to set his record time. Then people started experimenting by replacing the clutch with a torque converter like you find in an automatic transmission. And they started going fast. Next, people started to experiment with five-speed transmissions, similar to what was in pro stock cars. And yes, they went quick too. Paul Mahat used one to set the speed record and win the championship in his rookie year. However, at this stage, no one type of transmission is dominant across the Pro Slammer field. You'll find examples of all types. Depending on your choice, you can spend another $25,000 in your quest for speed. Okay, so now you've got the chassis, the body, the huge engine, and the transmission to send all of that power back to the rear wheels. But with over 3,000 ponies involved, you need a really special sort of differential to get that to the tyres. Have a look at this monster. Inside that massive housing is a very expensive crown wheel and pinion gear set and diff setter. The complete setup from wheel nuts through to wheel nuts, including the tail shaft, is going to set you back $30,000. Now all you need is a fuel cell, a data logging computer, safety gear, spares, fuel, lots of fuel, and of course all the tools and equipment. We'll just add in another $100,000. Let's see what we've spent to drive a car for five seconds. Try $525,000. Would you like an American crew chief with that? How about a transporter? Well, that was really intriguing, on it? Thinking about it, if I had the budget to be able to go pro slammer racing, I don't know which path or avenue I would take when you look at all the advantages and disadvantages from the different styles of setups that you can choose or, or go down there with pro slammer. And when you're speaking of money with pro slammer, one of the teams in first round, they had a bit of smoke, which is usually not a good sign. Mark Hinchwood for the uh, Fabiati Racing team there. Dramas in the first round, Rusty catches up with him in the pits. Indeed there is. Uh, drag racing is a hard old business because when you're the driver and you blow it up, the owner makes you fix it. Mark Hinchel would make uh, some damage in that run uh, in the first round of racing. Yeah, well look, we always knew Sam Fennick, uh, number one qualifier, it was going to be a tough round. So I tell you what, I drove the absolute bulls off the AC Delco Pro Slammer. I gave it everything I had. I got him on the whole shot. I was uh, at half track, I was kind of looking, he wasn't there. And I'm thinking, oh man, we might just have this one in the bag. And then, boom, we come through me. A little bit of puff of smoke. It's a bit of a sign uh, normally that uh, piston possible problem. Come back to the pits and sure enough, we've done a piston. So the boys are thrashing right now. Uh, we're going to try and make the next round, but if we have to sit out, we'll definitely make the uh, the third the third run. So that is the saving grace of the 400 Thunder All Run system. If they do miss round two, they can still salvage some championship points in round three. Now, a guy that's got a lot of work to do if he wants to make the championship final is, of course, Sir John Zapier, because uh, he 
It was only the fifth quickest winner of that first round, and he's now currently about to race the fourth quickest winner in Ben Bray for Gulf Western Oils. And it's a battle of the oils as, uh, of course, Zapier runs for Fuchs Lubricants, as he has done for many years. Man, this should be a good race, Mark. When you talk about rivalry, this is one of the biggest in Australian drag racing, Zapier versus Bray. These guys like to get one up on each other here. Zapier has definitely had the, uh, the better of the wins in the far past few seasons against Bray. So Benny would like to get one back here for the Gulf Western Oils team. It is safe to say that uh, they're not on each other's Christmas card list. They uh, are very fierce competitors. Not much socialising goes on in the pits. And uh, there's nobody each of them would rather be. You see the, the crew guys there checking the wheelie bars on Zapier's car, making sure it's at the right height they want. But there's two different staging styles here between Zapier and Bray. Zapier will go into pre-stage, put his foot down on the clutch, bring the revs up, and then slowly slide that clutch out and edge into stage where Benny will go straight to full stage. You notice Ben Bray had lane choice and he chose the left. That is Zapier's favourite side of the racetrack. And Bray makes it work for him. Wow, look at that, 5.73 from Benny Bray. He gets the win there. Great reaction time as well, but the team are ecstatic on the start line there. That's a big win for the team. That's two from two for Benny, and that's a quick pass as well. Ben Bray had that under control from the get-go. John Zapier loses a supercharger belt at about 1,000 foot, but the race was over by that point. Hey, he's pretty busy inside that car. He is pretty busy inside the car. I was actually just about to say that. I thought I saw Zapier lose a belt across the finish line there. Let's have a look. Zapier, left side of screen. You can see all some sparks out of the car as well. Loses the belt. And there's a bit of smoke too from Zapier. Not having the meeting it like, but Ben Bray is on a blinder. The whole Bray team, they're, all, <laughs> they're punching it. Two wins from two so far this weekend for Ben Bray and a 5.73 puts you guys in a pretty good position for the final round. Brett, mate, I've never seen you so excited on the start line. Um, I think we got rid of the miss. Um, that was awesome. Uh, the car dead straight down the middle. Bit of a move at half, but, man, that's awesome. And to get rounds up, like, they're a hard bunch of guys to get round. Um, Oh, it's awesome. We've been struggling since uh, Willowbank and we nailed it. So just like to thank Gulf Western, Century Batteries, um, Lumix, NGK, um, all these sponsors on board. Let us do this and have some fun. Um, that's awesome. He'll be happy. So let's see what third round brings. Well, if you're excited, I reckon Ben Bray is going to be even more excited. He's at the top end of the racetrack with Matt Kavanagh. Oh, Benny Bray was absolutely pumped when he came in. We see the arms going up. He was excited. 5.73, the win over your rival, John Zapier. Oh, mate, I can't just call him my rival. Them other nine guys up there, they're all too hard to beat nowadays. But taking anything down from John is nothing, mate. Like, I come out to run 5.72, 5.73. The old girl did its job. Uh, I feel I left on him. I'd say John had a little trouble because he come around a bit with a bit of a smoke out. But, hey, a win's a win. The Gulf Western um, Oils um, Corvette. Uh, whooped a bit of butt and Team Bray, here we come. Well done around two. Back to you guys in the commentary box. Well, two wins and a 5.73 in that round. And I have to say, Mark, I think he's still got a job to make the championship final. You're right. He's, he's got one hand there on the final at the moment, but obviously there's a lot of cars behind him that uh, have got wins in round one that were a little bit quicker than him, but that 5.73, it's going to give him some bonus points, but will it be enough? We'll find out shortly. On track, though, Michelle Davies for Pro Logistics coming forward. She's actually got a solo pass as we go to our camera down the bottom end with Zapier. There's a lot of uh, people around the front of that car. Hopefully there's no damage there to the engine. We can see fluid on the ground, so I would say that's not a good sign. Some of the Fuchs isn't where it's supposed to be for that car. Back on track though, Michelle Davies. She is on a solo pass here. The reason Mark Hinchwood has not been able to make it this round of racing with that engine damage he got in round one. So Davies will get the free solo pass here to see what she can do. We'll get 20 points in the bag. That's all about that ET now. Oh, that didn't go anywhere. It got up on the uh, two-step and then the car went to launch and hasn't gone. I wouldn't be surprised if the blower belt has actually come off that car. Something's gone wrong, that's for sure, because that's never part of the plan. But guess what? It's still 
20 win points because there's no one in the other lane. Well, just look at the front underneath the hat there. You saw the blower, but actually just come off the car. So these cars now with the two steps are going to be so aggressive. The belts only last two or three passes. So, and that's one of the uh, weak points at the moment for them. Yeah, the drive belt for the supercharger. If it comes off, then there's no boost and the engine just literally won't run. Well, poor Mahayat. He's, he's got a target in front of him now. He needs a win. He's got he's up against Jeff Graden again. That's just the way the pairings happen to roll. Uh, and Mahayat has already seen Ben Bray run a 573. He knows he needs a win. And he needs to run quicker than Ben's 573 to, uh, well, put Ben out of the equation as far as taking a spot away from him. And trying to take him out of the equation will be Jeff Braddon now. It is a rematch of round one. Braddon was not scared to chop that tree. He had to go for it. So he, he did go red, but that'll be in the back of the highest time because he went 584 with the red light. So you know Braddon is not scared to take this race to Paul Mahay at all. Yeah, well, Mahay, uh, if, if Jeff had jagged the triple O, that was going to be a very close race because he's a little slower than Mahay but not slow enough that a whole shot can't make the difference. What are we talking about a whole shot? A better start line reaction. Having your front wheels leave the start line beam closer to when the green comes on than your opponent. Paul Mahayat, Lemoyce, Komatsu, Mack Trucks, he's the defending champ, wants a win light and he wants to run quicker than Ben's 573. He'd like to run 560 something. The win's definitely with my hat, and he does run 569, 412 kilometers an hour. Massive speed there, Mark. Yeah, big speed. I was looking at the lane of ground. It looks like he might have hesitated. He could see the car start to move forward just before the lights came down. But it was all Mahayat on this run as we watched the back here of Braddon's car. He wheels up, got a little bit of tire shake there. He had to button it off, but 569, that would have been very, very tough to beat. Absolutely, guys. Down here with uh, Skip from the Moist team, mate. So 569, that currently gives you low EC, and you're only the second car into the 60s this weekend, mate. Congratulations. Yeah, we're pumped. That's, that's exactly what we were looking for, those kind of numbers. There's still a couple of quick guys to come out, but uh, big shout out to Moist, Mac, Komatsu. Uh, you know, we were into the, hopefully into the final with, you know, not yet. Not yet, but we'll see. Paul Mahoyet, you've got yourself another round win. How fantastic is that? You've got down to 569, so you might be in there with a low ET. Yeah, look, we've got a couple of big hitters coming, so uh, fingers crossed, but uh, my crew killed themselves. and uh, we, we stepped it up this round, and uh, like I said, fingers crossed, hopefully we get to the other end. Well, good luck, and uh, hopefully you go through to the final. We'll try, thank you. And it's the final that's on everybody's mind as Victor Bray comes forward to take on Stephen Ham. As it stands at the moment, the two that are there are Paul Mahat and Ben Bray. And this is where Victor could do his son a huge favour because if he can beat Stephen Ham and the Fuso Camaro, that takes Ham out of the final equation. So it's wide open, and that's what we've been loving about Pro Slammer. It's not only that we've had different winners at every event, but it's wide open as to even who makes the final each event. And, that, and that's the, the pressure these drivers face as well with the, the bonus points, the low ETs and all that. So Stephen Ham here, his maths are simple. Get the win, go quicker than Paul Mahat's 569. He pretty much gets guaranteed a spot in the final. Correct. That's what he's got to do. But uh, Victor Bray for Gulf West Oil, what he has to do is try and give his son a chance of making it into that championship final. And the car looked quick enough. And, and he, he is killer. As I said in first round of racing, Victor is probably one of the top two drivers at the moment, reaction time-wise, of this pro slamming field and how sharp he has been on that tree. So Stephen Ham needs to think about that as well. Victor would have ran in the 580 first round. If he got to the finish line, there's issues for Victor. Ham over towards the wall. He gets the win. He goes 5-7-0 at 407 kilometers per hour. So that's one part of the equation done and dusted there. Benny gets knocked out of the final. Ham is now in the preliminary final with Paul Mahat, but we've still got one more pairing to go. Have a look at this. Victor Bray with a problem with the Chevy, and it 
was looked like almost a replay of the Michelle Davies thing. It just didn't make any power after the clutch was, well, after the car was launched. No clutch in that one anymore. But you see Ham streak away, and he did what he needed to do in the fact that he was quicker than uh, Ben Bray, but he wasn't quicker than Mahayat, and that wheel stand might have made the difference. So Mahayat and Ham are now on equal points. Down here with Stuart Rowland. Uh, this three round format keeps throwing up all sorts of curly ones. At the moment, it, we think that you guys and Paul Mahay are tied on points. It's all going to come down to what happens with Sam Fennick and Emilio Spinozzi in this next round. It's definitely good for the fans, isn't it? Not so good for the crew chiefs. Yeah, pretty nerve wracking stuff there. Big wild ride there. You know, he didn't lift. He'd normally shut it off in that situation. But you've got to win. You've got to go fast. You know, it makes it very, very difficult to win. So, yeah, good deal. Is that what you were shooting for a 70 or were you hoping for a bit more? No, that was a 68 tune up there. Um, the weather, weather was there. That was weak. It shook because it was weak. We needed more power early. Simple as that. Well, mate, congratulations. Uh, fingers crossed for you guys. You do make it through to the final. That's it. It'll be a big fingers crossed. Um, Sam's car's been flying this weekend. Mark's doing a fantastic job. Very, very hard to beat. Yep. Matt Cavanaugh's at the top end of the racetrack. Yeah, I'm here with Stephen Hand. Had a wild ride down there. Still with the 570, you've got to be pretty happy. I think we lost a fair bit of ET on that one because it was hanging its tail out in low gear. But... Um, Hey, a win's a win. I don't know what I got on the tree, but uh, it def once I was out of low gear, she was on her way, but it was a wild ride up until then, that's for sure. Well, hold your breath and we'll see if you're going through to the final. Fingers crossed, mate. We need to. Emilio Spinozzi in the Speedmaster car. And he is up against this man, Sam Fennick, for uh, Lloyd's Classic Car Auctions. Now, the uh, scenario, Paul Mahayat is in the final because even though Ham and Mahayat are equal in points, Mahayat had the quicker elapsed time in the second round. That's the tie break. So Mahayat's in the final. It, he will be racing either Stephen Ham or Sam Fennick. It depends whether Fennick wins this race and if he runs quicker than Ham, job done. That's the equation here in this last pairing for round two of Pro Slammer. Sam Fennick on screen. This car has been a bracket car so far today. 566 in testing. 566 in round one of racing. What has he got here against Spinozzi? Spinozzi still looking for that first five second pass. These guys have been getting consistent round wins based on consistency out of this thing. That's what Fennick has got beside him as he moves forward. If he runs quicker than a 5.70 Stephen Ham and gets the win, he's in the final against Mahayat. We're going to find out in about five seconds' time. Fennick has not won a Pro Slammer event yet. Could this be his night? Fennick is going to the final with Lowy T, a 5.65, 4.12 there partying. There's Paul Mahayat already back on the start line. He knows who he's going to be running. And Spinozzi, they're happy too. They got their first five second pass as well. You won't see a happier team losing at the moment because they've just run their first ever five as well. Have a look at the replay. It's happy crews, both sides of the racetrack. Fennick goes through to the final. He'll take on Paul Mahayat. Can he make it four drivers with four event victories in Pro Slammer? How fast is Fennick? He made Spinozzi's first five look slow. I mean, it was a monster of a run for Fennick. He is going to be tough in that final. He is like, what, 66, 66, 65 today so far from Sam Fennick. That thing is absolutely tearing this track up. Well, he's down there with uh, Matt Kavanagh. Sam Fennick, you're going through to the final and you get low ET of the event. That's fantastic, mate. This car's flying. Uh, the Lloyd's Classic Car Auctions Camaro. It's, uh, it's just doing everything we're asking to do. Mark Savage, all my crew, all the boys back in the, in the pit area there. i uh, got a whole bunch of people to thank. Um, Atlantic Oils, uh, Two Way Cranes, Art Group, um, ITF, Broadband Solutions, uh, JSS Racing. We're, we're going to the final. Good luck. Thank you very much. Well, it's amazing how success right, attracts right. the sponsors and uh, those guys are doing a great job for them, that is for sure. There's Emilio Espinosa celebrating his first five second pass. Sam Fennick, maximum points, 56. There we have Mahayat and Ham both on 53, but it'll be Mahayat to go to the final. And what about Ben Bray? Great performance for him as well on 50 points. Those guys, that's going to shake up the whole championship uh, 
points table when we see it at the end of the show. Yes! And we see the team of Spoon Rosie there still celebrating. They've got to get back to the pits because right after this ad break, we will have round three of Pro Slammer and the final. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Sydney Dragway for the Santos Summer Thunder. Since round two of Pro Slammer, this is what's happened. Very light mist of rain started to fall, but it was enough to uh, put a halt to the racing temporarily. So we ended up with about a two hour break. Guess what? Ben Bray decided it was a perfect opportunity to bring out his Gulf Western Oil Corvette burnout car and uh, do a bit of a skid in the burnout pad for the fans that were very patiently waiting because they knew that we had a whole stack of great finals to run. You gotta say, when Ben gets out there on the burnout pad, he enjoys himself. Okay, round three of Pro Slammer. We have got Victor Bray to take on Mark Hinchwood here in the opening pairing. Hinchwood, of course, having done an engine change on that car between the first round and this round three. They had to skip round two. Victor Bray with his own problems in round two. The car really went nowhere off the start line, but uh, both cars sounded nice and strong in the burnout. That they did. And a really cool story about Mark Hinchwood. Sitting in the middle of his office is a Conrod signed by Victor Bray which he got 20 years ago as a bit of a younger fella with a dream wanting to race in Slammer one day. And the message from Victor, I'll see you on the start line one day. And here he is, racing against the man that he looked up to and idolised 20 years ago. He will be delighted to have finally uh, made good on that. He is seeing Victor Bray on the start line, but he won't be in awe. We know Mark, he's going to go at this. He will. This is only his third event in Pro Slammer, so he is still a rookie when it comes to the Pro Slammer. Sedan Racing, Victor Bray has probably done a probably about 15,000 more passes than Mark Hinchwood on track. Now, Mark, we've had rain, two-hour delay. Most of the crowd have gone, but how good is the track? Is it going to hold it? Are the conditions different? There's that, a lot of curveballs for the crew chiefs, isn't there? That's the big question right here. The first pairing will tell us how the track is. Will stand from Hinchwood, so it's got a bit of point. Victor streaking away. He gets the win, goes 590, 396 kilometers per hour. Mark Hinchwood with the 618 in the lane beside him. He gets the uh, loose points here in this round, but the wheel stand from Hinchwood, it bit hard. It was up in the air. You can see the wheels going up, comes back down. Both cars got up and down. Yeah. I think both had a bit of a pedal. They got on and off the throttle, and Victor still ran a 590 with a pedal. That's not a bad effort. Hey, Have a look at this. Tells me the track's got a bit of bite. You can see Hinchwood actually getting out there on Victor. As you see Victor streaked away there. Still old school shifting himself there, pushing the buttons down, going down track. He gets the win and the win points here in round three. And we've got Victor with Matt in the braking area. Yeah, we're down here with Victor Bray. You get yourself a round three win, some valuable points to the championship, and another five-second pass. Yeah, I was. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, the car's starting to go really well now. We haven't been working hard on it. So it's got a bit of a, it's got a swing arm rear ending, which is a bit of some people say antiquated, but I really like it type of rear suspension. But um, we're finding out what it likes, what it doesn't like, and uh, you know I think we find a lot of likes lately. So uh, we've had a lot of, uh, we've put a lot more performance into the engines this weekend, and uh, you know it's starting to pay off. The rest of the teams are really, really stepping up. So uh, we're going to fall on through and try and get in front of them. We'll leave it out of the start line, see how Benny goes. Thanks, mate. Well, Michelle Davies is burning out. She is going to be running against Emilio Spinozzi. The two guys we won't be seeing in this round of racing, Jeff Graddon and uh, John Zappia, both have got damage and can't make this round. Now, that is going to make John Zappia slide even further down yeah. the points ladder. Yeah, that's big championship implications-wise. Paul Mahay, that team will probably be a little bit happy about it, but yeah, that's big, big in the championship. But this race here in front of us, Michelle Davies taking on Emilio Spinozzi. Is anyone's race here? We know Michelle Davies has run a best of a 5.92 in this car. We've seen Spinozzi run into the five-second zone for the very first time in round two of racing here. So I think this race is just 
a really even matchup. It'd be great to see a side-by-side -side fire from these two because it uh, took them both a little while to get in there. But once you kick the door down, it just stays open normally. You've, uh, you've cracked the secret. So Michelle Davies for Davies Earthworks and, of course, Pro Logistic and uh, Emilio Spinozzi for uh, Speedmaster and Hitachi. Ford versus Chevy. Oh, Davies is loose. Spinozzi's loose. He has another crack at the throttle. Gets loose again. But in a pedal fest, he's going to roll across the line and... He has won so many uh, championship points with slow ETs and he's just grabbed another 20. That's it. He gets a win here. That's his first win of the for this event as well of the day. As we watch the replay, both cars, you can see the tyre shake marks there for Davies almost instantly. Spinozzi got out a little bit further before he had to pedal, so he had a bit more speed up his sleeve. He got back on it. She has a bit of a bucking bull there for him, but he rolls through for the win. So, Spinozzi... Another 20 championship points, Matt Kavanagh. You can't hold him back. Yeah, Emilio, you get yourself a win. Probably not the way you wanted to, but you've got to take the success out of this weekend. You got your first five-second pass. Yeah, look, the highlight of the weekend was definitely our first five. Um, you know, the boys have been working extremely hard. Um, yeah, so, yeah, definitely was a highlight of our weekend. Uh, we went out, I don't know, probably about... Oh, I would have been probably about 200 feet and it shook and got out of shape. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, I must have been the same with Michelle, I guess. Look at that burnout from Ben Bray. He is up against uh, this guy, Stephen Ham, who was just oh so lucky, unlucky rather, to have missed the championship final by, I think, a hundredth or two. Yeah, only a hundredth of a second for Stephen Ham from making that final hit this evening. But in this, this race here, both these guys have got two wins. Stephen Ham will be wanting another win to uh, obviously make sure that Fennec and Mahoya don't extend the lead on him as much as they can in the final. So Benny Bray, 573 in round two of racing. Stephen Ham went 570. It's only 300ths of a second separating the two cars. Ben Bray is already well up in the championship order, and I think this is uh, this has been a very good weekend for he and the Gulf Western Oil team. Uh, Steve Ham, the Fuso Brisbane uh, Camaro. I, mean, I, I just think he's just so unlucky not to have had a crack at the trophy tonight. Exactly. He went 5-7-0, 5-7-0 in rounds one and two of Racing Pro Slam. He got the wins and still did not make the final. How tough is Pro Slammer at the moment? Very late at night here at Sydney Dragway, the Santos Summer Thunder, round three in Pro Slammer. Ben Bray with some drama. Oh, 568, 410 kilometres an hour. Steve Ham just left at that round too late. Where was that two hours ago? It would have been in the final. But have a look at Benny Bray. He launched hard, wheels up. Obviously, when the wheel's in the air, you can't steer, and he was going towards that centre line. He had to back off. Steven Hamlo, this thing, watch out the next round of Pro Slammer. It is consistent. It is quick. He gets his driving right. He will be in more finals than none. Sorry. Oh, Ben Bray, what a wheel stand. But Steve Ham, you can't take it away from the Fuso Brisbane car. He has done the job. He's picked up 60 points plus some ET points through the night, so he's well and truly placed in the championship, Matt. Yeah, quickly, Danny, with Stephen Ham. You said you had a 68 in the tune last time. You went around and ran a 68 in this round. Oh, I'm, I'm glad we got, you know, to run a 68. You know, it's a bit bit of a shame we left it till last. You know, we were just behind Paul, 0 0.011 or something to make the final. <laughs> Better luck next time, Mike. Yes, it could have very easily been a Ham versus Fennec final, but not to be this time. Paul Mahat from Boyce, Komatsu and Mack Trucks in the Mustang. He's fought his way there, trying to be the first two-time winner for the season. So far, we've had three rounds, three different winners, Mark. And Sam Fennec will be looking for his first ever victory in Pro Slammer here in the final. You've got to say, Sam's probably the favourite here in the final. This car is living in the 560 zone. Mahay, it's been probably four, five hundreds behind Fennec so far today. But anything can happen in Pro Slammer. Camaro versus Mustang. The good old Chev versus Ford confrontation. Two Sydney-based teams. And, of course, Sam Fennec running for Lloyd's Classic Car Auctions really has stepped up the act since the uh, sponsorship has gone on to the side of that car. 
And they're on a bit of a streak at the moment. They didn't lose a round of racing up at Willowbank Raceway. Continued that form here at Sydney Dragway. In the final, on board with Fennec moving this car into stage. We can see the five-speed transmission there just uh, beside him. These guys have been so evenly matched, but I, I think I'm with you. I think Fennec's just got a little bit of a shade of performance. Oh, my hat's in trouble. It will be Sam Fennec for the win, a 5.66. No shoots, he's in a bit of trouble here, into the gravel trap. Not the way you want to see it finish in Pro Slammer. Sam Fennec has gone into the gravel trap. His parachutes came out, but look to have tangled, Mark. Yeah, just look in the replay here. Sam Fennec, he gets the win, but then gets into trouble in the braking area with no parachutes. The cars leave side by side, but all eyes on Sam Fennec here as it goes across the finish line. You see no chutes come out. He's hard on the brakes trying to pull this car up at 400 kilometers per hour. But something obviously has happened there to the car. Without the parachutes, these cars are incredibly hard to stop, even with their carbon fiber brakes. Let's ride along with Sam Fennec. Goes for the parachute at 410. He's covering 150 meters a second into the sand, into the net. That's what pulls him up. The car's going to be worse for wear, but we're already hearing Sam's walked out of the car himself, walked to the ambulance, and is being checked over at the moment, complaining of a sore elbow. These cars are just so strong. Well, Paul Mahayat with a runner-up. He's hung on to his championship lead, 355 points. Fennec with his first ever win, but it looks to have cost him a race car, 330. John Zappier, Ben Bray, Steve Ham, they wrap up the top five. Well, next time we'll join you, we'll be with the Santos Super Thunder from Willowbank Raceway. We've got Top Fuel, Top Bike, Grow Alcohol, Pro Stock and 400 Thunder Sportsman Racing. It's all April 19 up there at Willowbank. Then we return to Sydney Dragway for the Gulf Western Oil Nitro Thunder, May 3rd and 4th. And we've got all of the 400 Thunder professional categories and the Sportsman to boot. Then it's the big one, the grand finale, the Gulf Western Oil Winter Nationals, four days of mayhem at Willowbank Raceway, 6th to 9th of June. We're going to bring it all to you right here. Well, the weather did all it could to stop us here at the Santo Summer Thunder. Heat, rain, we had the lot, but guess what? We made it through. Make sure you invite us back into your lounge room when we bring you all of the coverage of the Santos Super Thunder from Willowbank Raceway.